Hey, what's going on everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, um, we're going to be going over, actually what we're not going to be doing is getting into making our map. I know, I know, I did promise you in one of my last videos that we would get started on that, but I lied and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. So there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, however, I'm unfortunately I'm not kidding about the map part. We're we're not going to get into that today. That will be the next video. Maybe I'll promise. <laughs> um, anyhow, I, I did want to. We'll we'll get through this very quickly. I wanted to skim through um, the ins and outs, like the inner workings of the map. Basically, you know, there's a lot more going on with making a map than just you know, laying down some trees, painting in some fields, maybe a road or two, you know, plopping in some buildings and boof, we're testing it and gaming, we're done. You know, most of us know there's a heck of a lot more to it than just that. Okay. Um, now with most of us, you know, if you're watching these videos, you're, you're probably a beginner, obviously. Right. So I just want to go over just briefly. I'm not going to get really, really far into detail. I just briefly want to touch on some of these, uh, these other files that we're going to be using, you know, where they live, what they do. And we'll go over just the main ones. You know, there's, there's hundreds of them, but we're just going to go over the main stuff just so you have an idea of what's going on and what we're talking about when we get to that part of it in the tutorial. Okay. Um, like I said, for you guys that already know most of this stuff, you can just skip on to the next video. Um, unfortunately for you, that video is not out yet. <laughs> so, you know, the guys that are watching this a year from now, they can binge watch all they want, but right now you're stuck until the next one comes out. Okay. So what are these files that I'm talking about? You know, what is it that was so important? Okay. So let's start here. There's usually when I work on a map, I keep two folders open. One of them is the game installation folder. We call that the base game files. When you installed the game, you know, the folder where it installed to. You know, we went over this in one of the last videos, the game installation path. I keep that open. And you're going to keep that open because you're going to be working with uh, placeables and stuff like that. And you're going to want to know where to find them. You know, what's the address to those placeables, the file address. And the other folder that I keep open is the local folder for the mod map that I'm currently working on. Right, because there's files and stuff in there that I need to access, and maybe some uh, whether it's XMLs that I need to edit or image files that I need to edit. Okay, so now that you see, there's there's two sides to this, right? There's the base game folder, and and the game, the save game folder, and the save game. This was created also when you installed the game, right? And when you look inside of here, you'll see that there's a Oops, let me get out of here. I'm in the mods folder. This farming simulator right here. There's a game, save game 1 through 20. This was created when you installed the game. Okay. Uh, in that folder, there's a mods folder. Okay. Right here, you can see this. Now, when I have you create your map, we're going to have, we're going to do a new mod from game. Now, you could either use one that you created previously. Now, it should have created it and saved it in documents in my S my FS 22 mods. And you'll either cut and paste or copy and paste from that location over here to your mods folder, or you can make a new one and you're going to save it to this folder. Okay. The mods folder is where every single mod goes, you know, whether it's a mod map or it's just like a tractor or a wagon, you name it. It all goes into this mods folder. And the reason that I want you to put your mod map into here is we're going to be testing it as we go. Now, it does not need to be zipped. I repeat, does not need to be zipped. Okay. It will work just fine in a normal folder with no issues whatsoever. All right. It will be an issue if you want to use like multiplayer or something like that. It, then it will need to be zipped. But while we're creating the map and testing the map, it's perfectly fine to just keep it in, in a plain old folder. And then once we're completely done and we finalize our map, then we'll zip it up and, and you know, leave it like that. That's the best practice. Okay. And so the reason I wanted to, you know, let you know about the two different sides here between the base game, you know, files and, and the local files 
not only because we're going to be working with both, um, but there are some differences as you go along. Like if you look at the map.i3d, now the map.i3d is the actual map itself, right? Every single thing on that map is in one fashion or another, it, it's referenced to in this file. Right, everything, no matter what it is, everything down to every last blade of grass to tree to bridges to every single thing on your map is somehow referenced in this I3D. Okay, um, now I'm not going to get into every little thing, but trust me, if you if you browse through it, you will see the references. Like I said, I'm going to try to make this brief. Uh, the one thing I did want to say is if you notice here that some of these file paths. Right, start with a dollar sign data, and some of them just look like a regular local file path. The difference there is just dollar sign data, those are your uh, your base game files. And these other ones down below here are local files. Now, the reason that there's two different ones is because as often as we possibly can, we try to utilize the base game files. There's no... no uh, no point in reinventing the wheel, right? It's a lot of overhead. If we would have all of these files contained within our map, it's a ton of overhead and our maps would very quickly become these gargantuan files that are gigabytes huge. And we don't want that. You know, we want to keep it down, you know, that file size down as low as we can. You know, like I said, I mean, what's the point? If, if you know, the player that's going to be playing your map obviously has a copy of fs22 that we can borrow these files from or else they wouldn't be playing it right um so that's why we do that it's just to keep the overhead you know down low now with that being said if for any reason we change any of those files any of them we're going to have to keep a copy of that ourselves right so keep this in mind because you don't want to you you don't want to change any of the base game files and then save it to the base game because that would just be a huge mess right so let's quickly we'll go over to uh let's see let's go over to like the data folder right and i'll just give you an example of that now you can see like i have animal mud one two three and four now these by the way are all the texture files that you're going to be using you know when you when you paint the textures within your map now there's four four of these animal muds make up one combined texture if you remember that right that was we went over that in another video um but now like say you went over to your map over here and you started painting animal mud all over the place just covered the map in animal mud now if you did not have a local copy of that the next time you went to play whatever map that was then you know if it was alpine map us it would have animal mud all over it you know, and you, and you don't want that. You don't want to mess with your base game files as far as like changing them and saving those changes to the base game. So that's why we keep a local copy of anything that we change. If we don't change it, we just use the base game. You know, it's that easy, right? Um, so in this data folder, this is where all your textures live, you know, for uh, anything as far as grass or animal mud, cobblestone, concrete, that sort of thing. All your density maps are in here as far as like weeds, stones, um, all your grasses and stuff like that's in here. Um, if you look at uh, a little further down here, we have all of our info layers in here. You remember when we did our info layers, you know, all of our tip collisions and um, our farmlands and stuff like that. That's all in here. Um, so every time you either paint a texture or you work on an info layer and stuff like that, when you save the game, or when you, when you save your map, it actually saves to this folder. And those items do. They just, it writes it to the image file and, and that's it. Oh, and this map DEM here, in case you're wondering what that is, uh, that's all your, that's your height map, right? It stands for digital elevation model, something along those lines. I could be mistaken on that, right? So it goes from white being your highest level, which is a default of 255 meters, down to black, which is your lowest level, uh, which could be anywhere from zero to whatever you have it set at. Um, don't worry too much about that. We'll go over that when, when we make the map and we start making it, okay? Uh, but what that does is this black is the lowest point of your map all the way up to the white, the highest point of your map. So you can see this gradient here. You can tell that that's a hill, 
right? Because it goes from very low up to white, which is very high, all right? And, and the reason that I'm explaining this to you is because because as you make any, make any kind of uh, terrain changes in your map, this is where like a mountain or a big, you know, gully or a ditch or something, that's going to be reflected in this DEM right here, okay? That's going to save those changes. A little bit different, I know, but that's that's where that gets written to like i said a lot of a lot of the uh changes that you make on the map get written to an image file it's just a really easy way for the game engine to keep track of all these things right okay so like i said there are some files that you're gonna want to be familiar with um, one of them being the mod desk now this is pretty important this is where everything gets started when you start playing the game it loads up the mod desk and it's got some some information in there that it's going to need you know it's as you can see just by reading it we have the author the version number of the map you're running uh the name of the map like i said this Mo rocky mountain reserve and ac rocky mountain valley i just haven't settled on a name yet but i will we're getting close uh then it has some locations some some file locations for some pretty important files we have the map.xml, the vehicles.xml, and the placeables.xml. And then one more over there where you can't see is the items.xml, all right? Because those are all pretty important files, and we're going to work with all of those. Um, so it's letting you know where those files are at. So as the game loads, the mod desk loads, and it starts pulling in all these other files. Uh, down here are the store items, and I'll explain those a little bit later. I'm not going to get into that in too much detail right now. Okay, so it starts, one of the items that it loads is the map.xml. So we go into the map.xml, well, that's kind of doing the same thing. It's providing us with some information, and it's and it's loading in even more files that it needs, right? So it tells us, you know, the width and the height, um, and you can tell that this is in a standard map because this is 4096 by 4096, and if you start making a uh, bigger map, you'll see that these, these numbers, you're going to have to change those. Okay, so we'll scroll down a little bit here and you'll see that, again, you see that dollar sign data. So you can tell that those files are, are base game files. And then like stuff like store items is a local file because, you know, it's just regular, a regular local address. All right, so we do start pulling in other files. You can see our farmlands, you know, we need to, you know, we need that, that file. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that it needs and this is what the map.xml is doing. It's starting to pull in those other files that we need. Uh, a good example would be, uh, let's see, would be a, a soil map. All right. I do have the soil map made up for, for this. It's, it's already done. The info layer is done. Um, but I haven't, I haven't pulled it into the map yet. I, the map doesn't know that it's supposed to be using that, that soil map. Um, and the way I'm going to tie that in, you see where like additional files and stuff, I'm going to put an, another, uh, another section in here that just says, Hey, you know, here is the location of my soil map. You know, I when you load, you know, load this file too because I'm going to start using it. Okay, so that's basically what the map.xml does. We're going to be doing a lot of bit, a lot of work with this, um, referring to it a lot as we go along. And then we have our placeables. Our placeables. If you look down here on the left hand side here, where you see like you know carpenter, gas station, bakery, that's those are your placeables. It's those sorts of things, right? And again, the same thing, you can see where it says dollar sign map directory, that's my local file. And just the plain data, that is the, uh, the base game files. And again, you can see that there's, there's two different, you know, uh, two different sides. So I'm, I'm using some base game and I'm using some local. Now, even some of my local, if you look at them, it's like the Carpenter EU, now, I, I have that as a local file, but it's clearly a base game file. Well, why? Isn't, you know, like the name of the game to use as many base game as possible? Well, it is, but something with that, something with that placeable, I changed. You know, I made some kind of change to it where I had to keep a local copy now instead of using the base game. But all of the placeable does here is it tells you, hey, you know, at this file location, like, you know, map directory placeables, farm buildings, farmhouse. Yeah, I want you to look for this XML, this farmhouse 02 XML. And I want you to put it at this position, this X, Y, and Z coordinates. And I want you to rotate it, you know, to this rotation. 
And it goes down every one of them in a list and it does the same thing. It goes and it finds those placeables for you and it, and it puts them on the map. Okay. And some of these files you're already familiar with, you know, the farmlands.xml, you know, the XML, the map.xml refers to this, you know, so that's kind of what goes on here. This is what I mean by behind the scenes. You know, there's other files that are, there's files that are grabbing other files that are grabbing other files. So it all kind of works together. All these XMLs, everything, everything is sort of incorporated with these XMLs. That's kind of how this works, right? And, and it, like I said, in the end, it all ties in, you know, to this map.i3d. This is kind of what makes everything work, you know? And knowing where a lot of these files at is, you know, half of the battle. And I'll show you as we're going through the tutorials, I'll show you where to find all of these files. And the more you do it, the better at it you will get. You know, I just wanted to, like I said, just briefly, really, really briefly just go over this with you. Um, just so you had an idea of what I was talking about. Okay. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to keep, keep going on and on about it. This was supposed to be a really quick lesson. And we're going to try and, you know, keep it that way really quick. So like I said, there's a little bit more to it than just plopping stuff on the map and, and, you know, calling it a day. All right. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, like I said, you will need a good text editor. Doesn't matter which one. Like I said, most people are using Notepad++. That seems to be pretty popular. Um, but you can use any text editor of your choice. And you will need a decent image editor, whether that's Paint.net, GIMP, or Photoshop. Alrighty. So like I said, hopefully that was quick and painless. And by the next video, we'll be getting into our map. Okay. And with that being said, I am Bauer Brown. And I will see you on the next one.